Starting your dream clothing brand is tough. I get it. I've done it. Back in 2013, if you guys follow my journey that far back, I started a clothing brand and I had to do everything on my own from designing logos, merch, spending thousands of dollars on test prints that didn't even look good because I couldn't rapidly iterate fast enough with my merch design concepts. So I had to learn the hard way. I didn't have all these design tools or, or AI to help me create concepts faster, but you guys are lucky because you're watching this in 2025 and we now have something called Kittle Flows. Kittle Flows is an AI powered design tool that helps helps users quickly generate endless variations of a single design or idea. Whether you're stuck on an idea or you're just curious to see what else is possible, Flows can help you unlock more creative options fast. This video is sponsored by Kittle, but just know that all of my thoughts are my own. They do not have say so in anything I say. I'm using this because I genuinely find it interesting. So with that out of the way, let's go and get started. If you're new to Kittle, make sure you use my discount code at the end of this video. It's going to get you 25% off all Kittle plans. Once you log in or sign up to Kittle on the left hand side, you're going to see a template section. And this is awesome because there's all these pre-built templates that you can start editing right away. So let's just click on one and see what it's all about. Maybe we want to go with this one. This one's actually really cool. So I'm going to click use template. So this is a monogram builder and this is just the cover art here, which you can actually turn into a smart board and start iterating off of it if you wanted to. But it looks like they already set up a artboard for the initials. So you can change these to whatever your initials are. And from here, we can create something called a smart board from this main board that allows you to input a prompt and create whatever you can imagine. So we'll take a look at a few of these real quick because they're already done for us. So let's look at the top one here. If I click on the smart board, you're going to see the prompt on the right hand side and it says generate again if we want to create another generation of this, which I actually like this one. So we're going to keep it. We'll go through a few more of these. So let's just copy this prompt. Actually, you could create a smart board with a smart board so you can see that they've done that here. So if you click on this smart board on the top here, you'll see that there's a branch going to a new smart board. So what they've done is they just created a smart board from that smart board. And we can do that with this right one here too. So check this out. If I click add smart board, there it is. And then from here we can add a prompt. So if I wanted to, I can just paste that prompt that I already copied and we can look at it. So this says turn this into a luxurious, into a vintage. Maybe I could put instead of luxurious vintage, even that one little change will make a difference. So let's generate that and see what that does. So if you compare both of them, there's a big difference, right? And all we did was change that one keyword from luxurious to vintage. And there you go. It's that simple. And you could do this as many times as you want. That's the beautiful thing about smart boards. They're, they're literally magic boards that allow you to iterate on ideas that you have. And again, you can start from a sketch, whatever you want to start with. So we're going to explore another one of my boards that I created, which is this Amity Affliction design I did. And I want to show you guys how I used it. And this is kind of how I see myself using it in the future too. But I started with my Photoshop design here. And you can see that I rapidly prototype these other ideas. So if we click on this smart board, this is just a wizard design, right? So I said, turn this image into a wizard with magic aura all around him. And that's what I received. And it's incredible. Now, due to this being AI based, right? The text is not always going to be perfect, so you might have to generate a few times to get the text right. But honestly, it was pretty spot on about 95 percent of the time. So what I've done is I actually took the design as a whole and I experimented with that and then I separated the elements out. So I just have this object here, which is the skeleton guy with the uh, Amity Affliction logo in the background. And I just messed with some ideas here. This one's actually really good. So you could technically just swap that out in Photoshop if you wanted to. So you can use this really as like the main design tool or like to complement your current workflows basically, which is really nice. We also have just the type and I also iterated on that. So you can see this prompt is a little bit more kind of complex, but not really convert this type into a retro 3D Chrome effect with hues of blue, teal, red and pink bloomed highlights. And then we even created a mock up, which is another awesome feature of Kittle. It's amazing with mock ups. So all I did was basically asked it to mock up this design on a t-shirt and you can see my exact prompt there. And if I click on this flame text, you'll see the prompt here too. So these smart boards are just honestly some of the most powerful use of AI I've ever seen. One important note about Kittle's AI models is they don't use it to learn off of you. Everything you create is private to you. They do not put it into this massive library to learn off of. Everything you do is private, which I really like. So let's go ahead and click on this smart board here. And I want to show you what I've done on the right hand side here because I've actually pieced this design together. And the way I did that is I clicked on the smart board and I just converted this to an image. And as you can see, it creates an image 
and then I can change the blend mode to screen. So with this screen blend mode, I can pretty much put out my design and that's what I've done here. And all I did was basically just took the other, you know, version of my original design and dragged it down. So let's say we want this one, we can convert that to an image and we can have that off to the side and we can duplicate this and actually bring it up because I actually like this other vampire a lot more. Let's drag that above everything. Actually, there we go. Look at that. So we can kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like if I were to turn this into a design. As a merch designer, this is such a powerful tool to speed up your workflow and rapidly iterate. We already know that now, but how does it work with logos? Well, luckily for you guys, I just rough sketched a really bad logo. I, uh, I just used Procreate and did this real quick. But as you can see, I was able to get this to a point where I'm actually pretty happy with it, especially this middle one right here. Actually, this right one. So let's say I like this logo and I want this to be my final logo. I can actually take this smart board, select it and convert this to an image. And then when you convert it to an image, we can actually just drag it out of the way here. And I'm going to click vectorize now on the right hand side. And this is going to create a vector logo for me. And after you vector it, you can choose the color. So if you have a multicolor vector that you want to create, you can select that right here. So I'm just going to choose one because obviously I'm only working with one color, which is black. Let's click vectorize image and it's going to do its thing automatically vectoring your logo for you. So you are ready to go and we can change the color to whatever we want. Let's make it white. We have a clean vector logo that did an amazing job. It doesn't look weird at all. And if you want to, you can even double click on the logo and change the anchor point. So I can go in here and really mess with it if I want to. I don't feel the need to though. It looks really good. You can even upscale it. That's crazy. There's a lot of cool stuff in this, man. I like that this one looks a little bit more hand-drawn, playful. This one looks like it could be my main logo for the brand. That is such an awesome concept too. And if we want to, we can go crazy. We could take this logo up here and we can add a smart board to this and we can make stickers out of it or an embroidered patch as you can see. So all I did was I added a smart board to this logo concept that's uh, that's more refined. And here is my prompt. Turn this logo into an embroidered patch with realistic stitching and it looks phenomenal. And this was done within minutes. Keep that in mind. Here's my prompt for this one. Turn this logo into a realistic sticker that is stuck on a brick wall with weathering. We can even put this on a mock-up. So let's try that out. Let's click uh, add smart board and let's go ahead and just type in add this logo on the pocket of a t-shirt of a white t-shirt and then the aspect ratio we can change all this so if i want to i can choose a different aspect ratio i'm going to keep it one by one which is just square and then we can change the quality to low if you want to generate faster you could do that so just like that we have a mock-up but it did add it to a pocket tee i didn't want it to be a pocket tee but it's okay you guys get the point still really cool and if we want to we can iterate further we can make another smart board and try a different mock-up maybe we want this to be embroidered on a beanie so let's try that out let's go add smart board just to show you guys, we'll move this out of the way. And again, this is an open canvas. We can move everything wherever we want it. It doesn't matter. Or maybe we'll do this. Add this logo as white embroidery on a black snapback hat. Let's be more specific. And we can even enhance the prompt if we want to, which is really nice. And that will basically just give you, obviously, a better prompt. Let's generate that and see what it does. Okay, that looks really cool. I'm not gonna lie. It looks a little embossed, but I'm happy with this. This is really nice to see. Prompting really does determine how good your, your generations are. So, you know, here's a good example of that. Let's go to this Chrome text template. By the way, I love this one, guys. Good job, Kittle. But this is so nice. Like, if you have a design in Photoshop, let's say, that you need Chrome text on, this is the way to do it right here. You start off with the template. Again, we just have our basic input board and whatever is right here. It could be your logo. It doesn't really matter. And then we have all of these smart boards with prompts that are built in. So it's basically like a cheat code for learning prompting. So if I click on this smart board, for example, we can see the prompt right there. You just basically copy this. You can refine it. You can change it. We can learn so much from these prompts, but we can also just add our own smart board and try to do like something experimental, right? So let's go ahead and just click the arrow. And in the prompt field, I'm going to type in something like this, turn this logo into a, uh, I don't know, melting chrome, liquid chrome, liquid chrome 3D design. I don't know. This is a random ass prompt. I'm not going to lie to you. Results speak for themselves. I don't know what else to tell you guys. If you're starting a brand, your dream clothing brand, 
and you need to do everything on your own, Kittle Flows has your back. It does everything you need it to do, whether you're coming up with a logo, you're designing merch, you're rapidly prototyping mockups. This is the way to go. Kittle Flows, guys. 